All righty. So welcome being here. I will give it up. Of course, we're in Creative Connections, so it's presented by myself. Hi, I'm Vogue Robinson and um, the Smith Center. So from the Smith Center, we have Candy Snyder to kind of do the intros. So if you want to take it away, Candy. Good morning. We are thrilled to uh, present Vogue um, to you. As you can tell, just in that chat conversation, the joy of toast. Um, only a poet would would think of putting the joy of toast together. Um, those words wouldn't follow in my, my book. We've had the pleasure of working with uh, Vogue in artist residencies here in Las Vegas and uh, wanted to share that opportunity to um, have her introduce you to her artistry and allow her to guide you in the, the process of, of using these strategies in your classroom. So thank you very much for joining and Vogue, it's over to you. Sweet, full screen, I can. There's some places, let's see, changing, all right. I love y'all, <laughs> um, I will go to, Let's go full size. I'll have to switch back and forth um, because a lot of what we're doing today is going to require um, for everyone to use Google. So if you have um, if you have a Gmail account, then you should be able to kind of participate a little extra. And if not, it's okay, we'll make do. Um, but no matter what, you're going to need something to write with, something to write on. <laughs> and it can be a notepad, an envelope if you live the life that I live, <laughs> which is whatever is nearby. Um, but we're gonna do some scribbling. Um, but yeah, so I served as Clark County Poet Laureate. It was a lovely two year term. Um, and now I still get to hang out and do fun things. So the first thing, yeah, there was a reason, <laughs> is I would like to learn about you. So what I'm going to do is take this link doo -doo -doo, and throw it in the chat. And what I would like for you all to do, if possible, do, 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 do. All that I can say to the chat. All right. And to the chat. There we go. So, S and O, it went to Claire. <laughs> Everyone in meeting. There we are. So, that link will take you to a document. And that document just has numbers on it. from the word sharing. Really? It worked just fine for me the other day. Are you not able to get into it, Teresa? Because what I would like is for everyone to use the link, go to this document, and put your name and your pronouns in it. So it looks like Rebecca is able to get in. Awesome, Teresa, you got it, sweet. Thank you, Evelina. Sweet, Hannah's in, so perfect. So try to choose a number that no one else is in <laughs> and go ahead and put your name and your pronouns into the sign-in sheet. And I'll give us just another minute to do that, but I want you to write down your number as well. And I'm going to sign out of it so that you all can do that. But try to remember your number. All righty. So if you know your number already in the chat, could you just type your number so I know that you were able to get in there and you were able to write your name and that you got a number. It's kind of like bingo or like when you put kids, students in groups, you're like, you're a one, you're a two, you're a one, you're a two kind of thing. And if you weren't able to, you'll still have access to this document. I plan on giving everybody everything that we've done today. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Nine. Good, good. 
Mace Bannon is my brother's made up name because I tested this on him yesterday. <laughs> so, you know. All righty. So, I think we're okay. I'm going to move on. So, let's get back into this lovely presentation. Mm -mm -mm. So many windows view present. Um, so our goals today, we'll read some poetry, we'll review literary devices, we will write a collaborative poem, and uh, then we'll have time to discuss ways we can bring collab collaborative poetry into your classroom. So I'm gonna run this workshop the same way, essentially I'm modeling. So everything I'm doing is what you can take to your students um, and, and use with them and obviously adapt it however you so choose. I got people in the chat. Oh, I'm so glad that you're fine with me singing and typing. <laughs> so why poetry? Uh, I'm sure you know this young lady is Amanda Gorman. She is the youngest inaugural poet uh, in US history, named the first national po youth poet laureate. And it's a title given to teen poets who both have a commitment to artistic excellence, but they also wanna do civic engagement, social justice, all of those beautiful things. So um, an engaged poet, you know, usually the poet laureate doesn't necessarily have to be the best poet per se, um, but how do you use your work to serve the community? And I'm sure many of you know, the reading of poetry and just the enjoyment of poetry has increased. Okay, Leah, I'm sorry you weren't able to get in, um, but I will work towards making sure you get um, a copy of all the documents. Uh, and you can have number one, Leah. Um, and Carlene, same, same. Um, so yeah, Poetry Research, and this is from a USA Today article, but People are enjoying poetry more. I think it's really more so because of Instagram and YouTube. Uh, poetry was meant to be heard and read aloud. And you talk Shakespeare, Shakespeare, the poems were sung. So, you know, I think if we listen to poetry more, we'll, we'll get a better grasp of it and get more people to love it. Thank you, Jason. Welcome, welcome. Da, da, da. All righty. So step one, you get to write and listen to John Coltrane. So on your piece of paper, Whatever you've got nearby to scribble on, or if you're a typer, then type it. But I wanna give you three minutes to answer these three questions. The first question is, what is connection? What does it mean to you? And what images come to mind when you think about the word connection? So write your number on your page. If you have a number, if you don't, I'm sorry, and it's totally fine, ignore that step. Write as many words phrases and descriptions as you can to answer those three questions. And I'm giving you three minutes to do so. Uh, if that makes sense and you're good to go, hold on. I used to be able to see your faces. There we go. All right, people whose faces are up. Give me a thumbs up if you're like, all right, I can do this. That's easy. All right, thank you. <laughs> all right, let's do music. <laughs> and let's go back to the page, Vogue, Butterfingers. Awesome. Hopefully it plays. Yay! Three minutes. Happy writing.
one. <laughs> that is your time. <clears throat> Somebody's in the chat. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, look, you guys wrote it in the chat. I love that. Thank you. 13. A relationship, a link with something or someone holding hands, feeling good. Connection is creating a bond between one thing and another. It means reaching others at a special level. Yes, y'all. Uh, I always live in nature. So I wrote like the humming of bees an assembly line, it means safety, it means joy, it means feeling understood, ants walking in a line, memory, audience laughter, and then I was gonna cry, y'all. <laughs> what is connection? It means look, ah, oh, the look when a student gives you and they understand, yes, the nod. <laughs> Satisfaction of a project and union comes together. Football, okay. I think of a perfect offense play with rhythm and time and connection. When we connect, we succeed. Amen. I love to think of um, choreography in that way, like that a play on a football team is choreography. Connection means to be synchronized with each other. Can you get me my earbuds? I think they might hook up to my phone better. Uh, let's see. Two people can collaborate in all facets. When I think of an image, music, yay. A slow dance between two people, a soul train line. I love that I didn't tell y'all to do this and you're just down. <laughs> this is the meeting of similar people, humanity and others. Okay, I'm so overwhelmed. This is beautiful. I can't wait to put this all together. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. Um, only cause time, but only cause we're time, gonna use but. these lines. So let's talk a couple of key terms. Um, cause we are gonna use your lines and put it into a document. And I'm going to ask everyone to go ahead and mute. Everyone to go ahead and mute. If you can, please. If you can, please. All right. All right. So save these lines, y'all, because so we are Save reading. these lines, y'all. On the screen right now, we're at key terms. So just in case you've got students who do not know these terms or you need a refresher, um, it should be down. Decrease in that. Hopefully, it's better. Super sorry. Um, these are your building blocks for a poem, right? Um, there's a lot of things that people think a poem is or isn't or should or shouldn't be. Um, I'm not here for any of that. <laughs> if you call it a poem, it is a poem, um, but using literary devices is gonna help you um, build a decent and beautiful poem. So here are a couple of um, tools that I use. Metaphor, simile, the five senses, and then knowing what a structure of a poem is. So a line versus a stanza. Uh, hold up, there we go, metaphor. So if I could have, back to the chat. Carlene, could you do me a favor and read this definition of metaphor, please? When a word or phrase is directly compared to another word or phrase. Thank you. Awesome. So yes, it's just compare. Sorry. You want me to compare? Oh no, you're fine. Oh, I just wanted okay. you to read the definition. Okay. Thank yeah. Thank you. And so the example we have for that is the world is also our canvas. Um, so is the world actually a canvas? You could argue that, <laughs> but it's not a physical canvas in the same way of a canvas that an artist uses. Can we use it in that way? Yes. So it can be a direct or indirect comparison um in the ways of like you know oh you are a shining star so there's you are like which is really a simile because of the use of the word like but if you directly compare it so you are that is um you know you're better than a cup of coffee <laughs> like the direct comparison um is what makes a metaphor strong a metaphor is more than the punch in the face so even if you insult someone there's your acting like a or you are a <laughs> And you are a is, um, <laughs> is more direct. I hope that makes sense. That's how I think about um, metaphors. Uh, they're just more direct. They are the punch in the face. Alina, thank you for sharing. Animal to person, food chain, circle of life. Beautiful. Leah is in and out. All right, let's go to the next one. Simile. Anthony, can you do me a favor and read the definition of simile, please? All right, simile. The comparison of one thing to another thing 
of a different kind using the word like or as. Lovely. You've got a great speaking voice. I want you to teach like vocal. <laughs> I don't know if you're a vocal coach, but I feel like you should be. So here are some examples of a simile. Art serves as feast. I mean, like, you know, a culinary artist, you could argue. I'm down for arguing everything is art, <laughs> but um, technically you're not gonna eat a painting. <laughs> so it doesn't, it's not exactly the thing. It is the comparison. She's as quiet as a mouse. So is she a mouse? No, but it's comparing the sounds she makes or the lack of volume to the movement of a mouse. Um, which you can bring scurrying in, but that's another ball game. I miss you like the desert misses the rain uh, just because I'm in Las Vegas. <laughs> and then it's hot as hell. <laughs> so you've got as, you've got as, you've got likes. So those kind of make a simile. And how I remember is you've got the like here and there is the L and simile has an L. Metaphor has no L. Five senses. All right, I've got a decrease the size because this is your chance to throw them in the chat and I'm going to add them to the box. I gave you smell. Everyone in the chat, what are the rest of the senses? Throw them in the chat. Look, I can y'all be my class forever? Touch, touch. Look, everybody's like, just touch. <laughs> Sight. Somebody, okay, wait, taste. Da -da 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 -da. Hearing, there it is. Right. I'm missing one, but it's probably in the chat and I just can't see it yet, y'all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> I see dead people stop it. <laughs> Taste, hearing, touch, sight. What are we missing? It's just the face. Hey. Th thank you. Did I not? Thank you. <laughs> thank you for knowing you got to yell at me. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Boom. Five senses. Five dollar foot long. Um, anytime I want to give a poem, um, I need a poem to be like a sandwich and I want to take a bite of it. I start thinking about what are the smells? What are the tastes? What are what does something look like to be more descriptive? And in any writing, the five senses um, are what make your work powerful. So I'm drinking coffee this morning is one thing, but I'm drinking hot coffee, right? Someone said uh, a hot, <laughs> yeah, hot coffee. I'm drinking hot coffee with, this is actually a chai latte, but so this is chai. I'm giving you what the flavor is, the temperature of it. Um, it tastes like a hug. <laughs> so how do I combine those two feelings of here's the taste, I wanna describe the taste, but with some other element of feeling. My favorite tummy hugs. Yes, coffee is my favorite tummy hug. That's a whole poem. So, but, we use poetry colloquially. We use it in everyday conversations. Um, and so it's just a matter of just seeing it slash hearing it slash feeling it. <laughs> um, this is just my life, y'all. So yes, the five senses. Even if you feel like, oh, I suck at poetry, I bet you, you can build a poem out of just the five senses. So keep them in mind. Let's go back over here to the view. Da -da -da, somebody's in my chat. Yes, five foot foot long. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. I just need the view to get bigger. There we go. Full screen, baby. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Next. So stanzas. Um, the stanza is the poetry paragraph. It is a section of a poem separated by a space. So literally on the right side is an excerpt of my poem. That space between womb and let it be what harnesses. That space means that the top one is one stanza and the bottom part is the second stanza. It's just space. Uh, sometimes a line all by itself can be a stanza. It counts. Um, so it has the fluidity, but just so you know, like sometimes when the things are broken up, it's because the poet wants you to look at that first stanza on its own and then look at the next one. Um, but taking in thought and giving you the chance to breathe. Poems are complicated. <laughs> so stanzas, any questions about stanzas? Just to check in in case questions go in once. If you have it, you can throw it in the chat or you can unmute and say it aloud. Questions going twice. Hi, what's the purpose of stanza? Yes, so it's a chunk of thought. Um, 
a lot of times as a reader, if we see text and it's just this long block of text and it's all together, um, sometimes it's daunting for a reader. So it's to give you as a reader a breath uh, and myself as a, as a poet uh, a, a breath as well. So I'll read you this. Um, and so you can hear where the stops are. Um, if the world's a stage, it is also our canvas, an empty music sheet, choreography we made up in the womb. Let it be what harnesses wind and beauty and breathes life back into us on days heavy with despair. Share, create, touch, connect, transform, be whole again. So it's just where you can breathe. It's like singers, like singers need to breathe, poets need to breathe, <laughs> and your brain needs to breathe. So, um, but yeah, I think of it as the poetry paragraph. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that question. Move it, the line. Ba -da -ba. So it's like a sentence, but not really. <laughs> um, over here on the right, I've numbered each line. So even if it's not a complete sentence, a line of poetry stand can stand on its own. Uh, and sometimes the poet decides to go to the next line um, because they want you to breathe there too. Like sometimes I think of the, the going to the next line being like, this is an invisible comma, but the point of it is just that I stopped at stage. If the world's a stage, it is also our canvas, an empty music sheet, choreography we made up in the womb. Um, so sometimes it's, it's the space for that. And sometimes they just break it because they're tired. They don't want a long line. <laughs> like it's just because you just don't want a line that goes off into the beyond. Um, so a string of words, even if it's an incomplete sentence, and um, sometimes it's meant to be paused on. If you want people to focus, then you put words all by themselves like in the womb. Uh, so line number five here, in the womb is all by itself. Uh, and that's on purpose so that you think about like being in the womb and like a child kicking in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if they are dancing? What if it's choreography? Somebody's in my chat. Na, na, na. Snaps. Hey, I appreciate you, Rebecca. Do we have any questions about the line, a line of poetry? Is there something I can clarify before we move on? Going once. Going twice. Yes, chat. In the chat. Um, so if you're teaching poetry, you should num you can number it. Normally, no, uh, most people don't number their lines, but uh, it's kind of like in theater, like if you've ever read a script, sometimes scripts have those numbers beside it. So if you're trying to discuss a poem in a class, it's better to just have the students go through it and number it. Just number each line, because then they can say, okay, in stanza two, line six, so um, like the Bible, <laughs> chapter six, <laughs> verse 14. But yeah, I numbered it to help with reading the piece. And that's how I was taught in school as well. Like we number this so that we as a class know what we're talking about. All right, so let's go venture forth to my poem. Mm -mm -mm. We're at the halfway point, so we're making good time. I soon, there we go. Be my friend, computer. Un momento, y'all. Copy in it, paste in it. So I'll read it from here and then I'll give you all access to it. Um, so as you're listening, just be listening for um, those examples of um, simile, metaphor, the five senses, whatever you feel like you understood the most, try to listen for those things in my poem. And I'm gonna try to make this a little bit bigger because I know I can't see anything these days on the computer. All right, if this is visible, hold on, let me find my people who are visible. There we go. All right, Carlene, Allison, Samantha, Teresa, is this visible? Is this cool? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, thumbs medium. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. <laughs> I love you for that. <laughs> okay, somebody else is in my chat. You know, yes. Vogue, um, it's not centered. I mean, it's not it's supposed to be like down. So it's not really clear. Okay, so let's see. I'll see if I can make this full size. And I just gave you all the link too, so you can at least look at it as I read it. Um, but I'm going to scroll down. It's not meant to be 
centered. It's oh, okay. actually supposed to be it. I'll scroll so you can see, but it so, it moves across the page on purpose. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK, so. Oh, I see. Okay. Because it's a poem about art. And so it's a weird poem. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I did a lot of spacing and tabbing. Oh, OK. So, it's so a dance. I only, I only saw it to 10, so that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Uh, and again, I numbered it for y'all. But normally, no, these numbers do not live in my poem. Uh, but this is one of the first poems I wrote that I kind of danced across the page um, on purpose. I'm going to check in at the chat. Come on, carrot. There's a carrot. Edit tool to to make more show. Hold on, tasks. Wait, where, Teresa, unmute and teach me things. <laughs> so at the end of the edit bar, there's that little arrow that points downwards. I call them carrots when they're an option edit. This thing? I, I can't see it's underneath my camera. So let me, um, no, but right next to the pencil. You click on that and it'll make the title and everything disappear and give you more space. Woo, I love you, thank you. <laughs> then when you need your file and everything, you just click it again, it pops like it, it back did. down. I found out by accident and now I know on purpose. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, oh man. This is the best. All right, so let me read you all this poem. Uh, I wrote it. I wrote it whenever I wrote it. It's at the bottom, but I will read you this piece. And your job is just to listen. Uh, and if there's something you like, then you know, take note of it or just write the line number down on your paper. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> Reading poems aloud. Doing it. I do this for a living. Okay. <laughs> the working artist dinner table. If the world's a stage, it is also our canvas, an empty music sheet. Choreography we made up in the womb. Let it be what harnesses wind and beauty and breathes life back into us on days heavy with despair. Share, create, touch, connect, transform, be whole again. The salty sweet balance of kettle corn dancing the tango on your tongue. My mother's inability to measure or refrain from saying these scrambled eggs need more salt. The smell of gingerbread men rising to the task of serving as both treat and decoration. The perfect dress that embraces your shape made from a fabric that sings elasticity in the perfect key. The lullaby that rocked my sister to sleep each night, the rhythm that bundled her in my grandmother's warmth, the chalk outline of a home not yet built, the photo of the girl who would grow up there. This is art, handcrafted, built sturdy by imagination and faith. Ham hocks boiled in a sea of collard greens. Seasoned with a pinch of patience, salt, garlic, and pepper, the texture of cornbread crumbled with butter and honey, a memory of my grandfather, his hugs scented with a twinge of burnt tobacco, his unaccompanied oxygen tank, then an empty chair. The first song your ancestors' hips discovered their rhythm in, the violinist's perfect chin rest, the drum, a war cry, the horn, a familiar friend, the poem that seeps into your mind and becomes mantra, the story that builds hope. Art is not a path to starvation. Art serves as feast, born of necessity when prayer felt like the wrong answer. In the beginning, stage, ma stage manager called the cue, let there be light. Poet, the first spoken word artist, spit words and thoughts so clear the world came to be. Painted the sky blue, brush strokes of white and gray for clouds, mixed media for ocean, mountain, flower, fern, and tree. Sculptor took clay and shaped man into image, took wind and blew it into masterpiece. Every poem, every painting, every meal, every sculpture, dance, song, story, image, every piece of art is our attempt to add to the world, to reveal ourselves as vulnerably alive working so hard to just breathe. That's that poem. When did I write this poem? Oh, November 3rd. I wrote it November 3rd <laughs> in 2017. Um, so thank you for letting me read that. I appreciate it. I was gonna say, Rebecca, I think that's the same conference. So that is my poem. Um, that's literally made out of pieces uh, of metaphor of simile. Uh, there's a lot of senses. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, I went nuts. Like I went really nuts, like over the course of like 48 hours to write that poem. Um, 
but just thinking about creation and the concept of, of a higher power being an artist. And so then here are the things we can create. Um, and what are the things we remember? What are the things in our lives that double as art? Um, that art is a living, breathing part of everything that we do. Um, so yeah, that's that poem. Uh, and I don't share it to like uh, intimidate you. <laughs> I just wanted to give you an example. So let's roll tide back over here, roll tide. <laughs> And you, of course, have an assignment. Um, all right, so saving a copy of this poem. Um, the way that you do that is to use the link that is in the chat if you are able to. And if not, I will um, get your email and that way I'll be able to send you the document in the chat. Talking, annotate. We'll talk about that. <laughs> um, step one, though, is to save a copy. So if you go to file, and then one, two, three, four down is make a copy. And that should save the document into your Google Drive so you can scribble all over this and not have to worry about me. Creation. Oh, uh, I love it. James L. Jones used to have a speech impediment or like he didn't speak for a long time. Um, so yeah, it's really cool to see the kind of actor he is now. Um, but yeah, right now, everybody's job is to go to file if you're in Google Docs and make a copy of this document. And once you have done that, then go ahead and type in the chat, got it? Or a smiley face, one of the two. <laughs> got it or a smiley face, please. And again, I will work towards making sure that you all get um, these documents as well. But if you can save it now, save it now. Take it. <laughs> Ms. Robinson, I don't see the link in the chat. Yes, because uh, I got people typing in the chat. So that's my fault. Hold, please. Oh my God, it's got, uh, got out of the way. All right. And Leah, I see your um, message and I will work towards doing that for you. Okay, Anthony, you can't make a copy either. All right, so my people who can't make a copy, you can take notes on your paper. Um, and then right here, Teresa, the, um, I can't talk. The link is right there. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. All right, that's a good chunk of folks. Beautiful. I was gonna give y'all seven minutes, but I think it's gonna be two. <laughs> so I'm sorry, <laughs> but I wanna be able to move. Annotation. Annotation is the idea, you're having a conversation with the text. So you're looking at the poem, or whatever other writing it is that you're looking at and you're taking notes in the margins um, of things that you like about the piece. Um, and if you notice any similes or metaphors or sensory details in the poem, you can write down that line number. So if it was line six or something, you say, okay, that was a simile, question mark. I think it was a simile. So annotation is really just taking notes in a text, but it shows that you're critically thinking about the text and um, you know, y'all are having a chat. So I hope that explains annotation. So instead of seven minutes, y'all got two minutes <laughs> to annotate the text. And what I'll do is go back to the poem so the people who are unable to save a copy are still able to see at least half of the poem. So two minutes, no, no, no. So when you wanna share a document and you don't want people to be able to make changes to it, you just change the word on the end to view or copy? Yeah, I wanted I wanted it to be available for you all to, to steal. <laughs> so I wanted you all to be able to take it from me. Um, so yes, but I'd like for you all to look at the document. If you have it, I'm gonna switch right back in just a moment. But you can put write down the number of the line if, and then put a smiley face if you like that line or you can, and you can label anything that you noticed was a simile, metaphor, or a sensory detail in the poem, okay? So we'll do two minutes of annotating. And let me move this up. Okay. Any questions? No, there's a lot of moving parts. All right. I'm just gonna set a timer.
for 90 seconds now. <laughs> Sorry. really loud timer. Okay. Checking in in the chat. 10 minutes left. Line 11. All right, so let's check in, check in, check in. Uh, attack. I attack. I feel I feel attacked with the word attack, sir. <laughs> um, all right. Attacks your taste. It felt very effective, made you feel the message, not just hear the message. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Hannah, you want to share one of the things that you liked or noticed? 23, 26, 32, I, football. OK, 26, 32, <laughs> to the poem. <laughs> um, the first song, your ancestors' hips learned their, discovered their rhythm, too. That I liked. I'm very biased. 32, why 32, Hannah? You can unmute if you'd like. Ah, OK. Um, hold on, I have to go look at it. I love the perfect dress uh, with hips. It just sings to me because, well, the perfect dress that embraces your shape made from the fabric that sings elasticity in the perfect key, right? I'm wearing that right now. Um, yes! <laughs> and uh, 32, is that the question? Sorry, that was the original. Um, oh. Art of God of Paths of Starvation. Um, because I'm a theater teacher and uh, I've been a dancer my whole life and um, because it can be a path of starvation and so many people say you have to like starve for your art and all of that so it was really touching and I don't know it made me cry so I liked it um, and then 33 um, art serves as a feast born of necessity when prayer felt like the wrong answer so um, I grew up Baptist in the South and I wasn't allowed to dance because it was a sin <laughs> and I was a dancer. And so it was really hard to express that and prayer didn't fit when I wanted to move, you know? And I've changed now, I'm not a Baptist anymore, but <laughs> I wiggle all the time now, but it's really interesting that, you know, to, to combine Southern blue nose Southern Baptist with other forms of Baptist where movement wasn't allowed, you know, and so that that touched me. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and yes, I think sometimes like I don't pray as often as I really want to, but the poems end up being uh, my prayers. And so um, for those of you, you know who end up teaching poetry or bringing poetry into your classroom, sometimes you know don't tell them you're, you're writing a poem. Like it can be a prayer. Like write a wish. Um, and that becomes a poem all by itself, um, in my experience. All right, let's get out of my poem. Get out of here. Da, da, da. So we have annotated, beautiful. And I want to try to give us at least five minutes to actually talk about your classes and how we can help. OK, look at that. We already did that part. Yay. Numbers. All right. So. I'm gonna give you a minute or two to try and edit those first notes that y'all wrote. So right at the beginning, we did a free write and we answered these questions. What is connection? What does it mean to you? Why is it important? Now, I want you to use similes and metaphors or the senses to describe 
um, connection. And if you already did it, then you're just ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game. So let me look over here, looking over yonder in the chat so I don't ignore people. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, oh, COVID isolation is real. Oh, oxygen tank. Sweet, yeah, hard stop at 1050. All right, so let's do one minute and let me give you all this link. Because the whole point is to get a poem together. So if you are able, all right, get your life up going once in the chat. All right, so what you have now in the chat is a link to a document that has numbers just like the other one. I want you to find your number and write your favorite line that you wrote so far on the scribbles <laughs> of our free rights. Write it inside of this document. Uh, and what it becomes is a group poem that we've written. So you don't have to write your name, just find your number, use this link, and go into the document and type in your line. And if you want to, you can follow these instructions, which is if you're odd, try to use two senses, incorporate the senses into your answer. And if you are an even, then try to use a simile or metaphor, but you're still answering the question of what is connection? Does that make sense, y'all? Basically copy and paste, <laughs> copy and paste what you've written into the document. And let's go look at that. Going over yonder. Mm -mm. Folks are in the chat. Yes, thank you, Anna. Life cycle blanket. That's my brother's line. You can ignore him. So you should all be able to get into this group poem, find your number, and write or copy paste what you have written so far into the space beside your number. Oh, ooh, it's happening, it's happening. This is so exciting. Okay, I'm gonna give you all two minutes. Actually one minute, I lied. So get as many people as we can. So if you can get in, go ahead and do it. If you cannot get into the document, just write your number and your line inside of the chat. Do, do, do. 46 seconds, no pressure. Thank you, Carlene. Oh my gosh. It's just like I envisioned. <laughs> Fourteen seconds. All right. I'm just going to read what we have, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. Body, mind, and spirit. Dancing, love, sparking energetic conversations. There is no other way. Be brave. Numbing to the constant throw of, I'm assuming that's going to be energy. Connection is like a bridge supporting and connecting. It's a Google. <laughs> connecting is like football. Connection is like football. I coach our elementary school teams. I think of a perfect offense play with rhythm and timing, a common light spark between souls generating warm satisfaction. My cat snuggled up on my chest, networking. Being connected is like a slow dance between two people or a soul train line with many. A memory of my grandfather's hugs. Yes, come on, steal my lines. I support it. Okay, so I can't move this page anymore, probably because there's a bunch of people in here. Yay for figuring out. Connection is hug, scent of skin, familiar face, a whole you standing before me singing. I love it. All right, people, I gotta get out of there. <laughs> Let's see, leave. It does not want me to leave. Moving over yonder. All right, so. Mm -mm, I read it to y'all and the bonus activity would be to have your students rearrange the lines. So the lines are in there, make your students rearrange them. 
and then they can make a new poem out of that. Okay. <laughs> and um, we're gonna talk about how do you think you can build this into your classroom? Um, could you use this in a different content area? Like I would, I could use this for mitosis and meiosis. Um, I could use it for respect if it was the beginning of the school year, if you wanna reiterate what respect means, there's 15 different ways to do it. I'm gonna leave this page up and throw it in the chat so you can steal it. Um, but would anyone, does anyone have anything they wanna ask or um, add into the conversation regarding how can we use this, um, this framework, if you will, in your classrooms? And I see there's a couple, inspire group art piece, right? And you can, definitely. What are the content areas y'all are in? Anthony, do you feel like you could use this in your class? You're my last word. Uh, so I teach geometry and we just finished up the proofs. So it's kind of hard to do poetry, but the kids could rearrange the proofs in the order they think that works the best. So I can use this uh, for that. Sweet, okay, thank you. Theater scripts and leadership ensemble building science. Monica, can you give me an example for science? Um, what I was thinking about was maybe just like, right, we're gonna get into photosynthesis and maybe just talking about some of the like inputs and outputs of the chemical reaction, putting it into lines and then maybe they can just kind of find a way to get creative and um, use it as a way to study um, for inputs, outputs, and you know, and kind of walk them through the whole um, process in the plant. Cool. I love mitosis and meiosis. Those are my photosynthesis too. Um, growth, the growth is my favorite metaphor. Um, I have a hard stop at 1050, but my information is here in the presentation, but also in the chat, please steal it. Um, feel free to contact uh, myself. This, if you need teaching artists or would like teaching artists in your classroom through the Smith Center, then definitely um, connect through that link that's in the chat as well. Uh, and if you did not put your email address in the um, in the first document, then you're welcome to put it here in the chat and then I'll save it. But I do wanna let y'all get snacks. Um, and thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful. Okay, yay, I'm glad it was fun. I was really excited to try. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. And again, feel free to contact myself or the Smith Center. Um, we'd love to collaborate.